Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment then the links to our social media are coming up on the screen now. Today we have a bit of a treat for you. We're here at the Town and District Transport Trust at their headquarters which is well, quite a large space and as you may be able to see behind me there are in fact several buses because yes this is a collection of 55 or 56 buses and when I say or there is legitimately so many vehicles in here that they have lost count. And I want you to appreciate that for a moment. And you may be looking behind me thinking, oh yes, I can see several buses. Yes, that is a fair collection. Two things to bear in mind. First of all, it goes off in that direction and that direction, and there are buses behind those buses. And also buses behind the camera. And also this nice space here where it's quite pleasant and open, you're thinking, oh yeah, I can see everything. This hasn't actually been cleared, especially for us to give a good impression. No, no, no. Normally there are buses here. Currently there are two outside. One is being washed and the two further buses are off having MOTs. Which means that normally there's absolutely no space in here whatsoever. So we thought it'd be kind of fun to take you guys for a walk around and just see some of the vehicles in here and kind of show off the collection. And it's, well, a bit of a labyrinth in here. So I guess I'm going to start off going this way. I'm looking at many, many buses. I don't understand what's just happened. But first, a word from our sponsor. I can't believe this has happened again. I'm just, it's not worth it for a visual gag. I'm not letting you drive me to work in the fire engine. I have good news and I have bad news. Great. We're going to be here for some time because this is important and it's knackered. But I do know how we can pass the time. You see here, I have Raid Shadow Legends. So unless you've been living under a rock recently, you've probably heard of Raid Shadow Legends. That's Again. what you're doing on your phone all the time. Yeah, it's really good fun. Did you know there's over 500 different characters and they've all got their unique different skills and things they can do. The thing I like most about Raid Shadow Legends is that it's on my phone. So at moments like this, where I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere, I have instant entertainment right at my fingertips. At the moment, I'm trying to work my way through the Doom Tower because if I complete all the secret rooms, I'll unlock Archmaid Helmut and he is Awesome, he looks really cool as well. And if you've got him, it shows you know what you're doing in the game. But I'm going to use my favorite character, who is Drexthar, Demon Spawn. Because firstly, Demon Spawn just sounds cool. His default attack hits three times, and if they're on fire, he regains health. So with all these goodies, it gives you a real head start for a great packed schedule of summer activities, including five new heroes. A fusion event where you will unlock an exclusive legendary character. If you too want to join in and play Raid Shadow Legends, there's a link in the video description where you can download the game on either mobile or on PC. You'll get the exclusive character Chunaru, who I'm currently using to grind through the Doom Tower. And as a special gift, you get 200,000 silver pieces and all of these extra consumables. But this is only available for new players for 30 days. So, come join me. It does PvP as well. So, I'm, I'm just going to walk. See you later, mate. See ya. Have you tried playing Raid? Lunch break. You can play it while you walk. One of the main facilities they've got here is this rather impressive paint shed where, you know, you can do the painty thing with the spray. And in here at the moment, we have this Atlantean, which is freshly painted in its, well, its second life in Rosendale liveries which is where it's been obviously the latter part of his life. And it's looking rather smart and gives you an idea of the size of a space you need in. We've been talking back home about having like a small tunnel, like a car blow up tent that we can put around to spray our own vehicles. And it gives you an idea just the sheer amount of space that's required to try and work on something like this. But it does look rather smart, doesn't it? There are several vehicles in varying different stages of restoration in here. For instance, this Atlantean here and this is almost ready for a new coat of paint. It's all been stripped down and it's, it's almost there. And we're told uh, when we come back again, this one hopefully will be done. And it's not just the more modern things. Like over here, we have an AEC region, which is, well, okay, that might need a little bit of work as it's missing the front. And yeah, that, that one looks like that's going to need a bit of love. But I love that. I love the half cab ones. Here we have another Atlantean, which is, well, originally bought as a donor but the owner's slowly coming around to the idea of it not being a donor anymore. 
In stark contrast, we have a much more modern Denny Star parked up here, and then we have a Leyland Fleetliner. It's not a Daimler, this one is the, the Leyland one. And then there's just a Saab. I don't know why this is here. I'm currently sat in at Leyland Atlantean, which is undergoing a bit of cosmetic restoration in here. In front of me is a Leyland Leopard coach, which is really quite a striking thing, and that, that too has been having some work on it earlier. It's having some new windows put in and the electrics are being played with. And this way, well, there's more. This thing is an ex Manchester Metro bus. And you might be able to tell from the smiley face up there and the eyes that this has been converted to a play bus. And it's been part of the plan to maintain it as a play bus to help tell the history and this particular vehicle story. Next to it is a Metro bus as it should be. And this one is an ex London one, which has then been sold on and it's shown in its later livery of life. So play bus, actual bus. Stood right in front of me again is another Atlantean and over there we have another Atlantean and then next door to it you may have thought that's another Atlantean but no that's an Olympian. They look the same to me but I'm reliably told Atlantean, Olympian. They are very very similar. Here there are cars. Behind us we have a lane and links hidden at the back and in front of that there's a green goddess. I don't even know what's around here. Ah, and tucked around there, there's the Daimler Fleet Runner. As we come back this way, it gives you an idea of some of the amount of work that goes into maintaining a vehicle like this, and also shows you some of the work that they are able to undertake here on this Atlantean. There is a, yeah, a lot of new metal that's gone into that. And the same for the coach over there. The Leopard has had oh, a lot of work there. And then of course, there is this Olympian which I particularly enjoy, has, has these hinging front panels. So I think they're kind of cool. Also having a huge amount of work and we'll have new paint, but new glass going everywhere. Here we have a Leyland National, which is in absolutely gorgeous condition. And heading off in a this way direction, you can see another Daimler Fleetliner. In the middle, just being washed there, there is a Leyland Leopard looking particularly smart. And then we have a Volvo B10 coach which are quite nice looking coaches. And then coming up through here, we've got another couple of Atlanteans. Behind me here, we have an Olympian, another Atlantean, and another Atlantean. And then coming this way, we have a prototype Metrobus. The Metrobuses we saw over there, that one there is the prototype, which was used by London Transport, looking particularly at home here in Lancashire. And over here, well, this thing is quite special. This thing here is a Leyland Atlantean, but it's a bit special. Built in 1960, this was known or nicknamed the Gay Hussess. And what's particularly interesting about this thing is it's basically the forerunner to the modern National Express coaches. This thing was designed to do runs from Scotland down to London. So it's, yeah, that forerunner to your modern big double decker coaches. It was equipped with ahead of its time airbag suspension, although it was a little bit crude and unrefined, and so it was fairly quickly changed out to be springs. It was equipped with a toilet here in the back and the sink still in there, had a secure luggage area, and most importantly, it had these really nice aircraft style seats. It really was almost too ahead of its time. As far as we're aware, this is the only one that survives. So it's a real important thing. And as you can see, it's not weathered that well. And there's an awful amount of work that the trust here is trying to do to put it back together again so it can once again grace the roads because it's a really really important part of automotive history. Walking down this way we have another Metrobus then this is an Atlantean, that's an Olympian, that's an Atlantean, this one is a DAF DB250, that's an Atlantean, that one and that one are Volvo Olympians. And this one is what me and Matt have decided is the best named type of bus ever. This is a Dennis Dominator and the bodywork on this was done in East Lanks. And to the best of the trust knowledge, this is the only survivor that has this style of bodywork on it. So that makes it quite important. And around here, well this thing, this is quite special. 
This thing here behind me is a 1950s Daimler, and you may be able to notice that it requires, well, some work. This was abandoned in a field and well, had a tree grown into it. The chap who decided to rescue it, it took him three years, not to actually get it, but to build a road leading to it that he'd be able to extract this machine from. When he did extract it, it had the roof still intact. The subsequent transportation, however, had a one of those unscheduled spontaneous disassemblies. And so the roof became, well, the whole top deck became not a top deck. Generally, I'm not a bus expert, but I'm aware that spontaneously going from a double decker to a single decker is generally ill-advised. And that's basically what's happened here. So this needs an awful lot of love and attention to put it back to, well, back to its former glory, but at least it is now undercover and dry, so it won't get any worse. This thing here is a Daimler Fleet Runner, and then we have Volvo B10s, times one, two, three, and in fact, four over in a that way direction. As I squeeze myself through this pillar and the B10 there, we have another Volvo Olympian, and then this, which is something that really appeals to me, a Blackpool PD3, which is another half cab and just wonderfully vintage. And then as we finally make our way to the back wall, we have a Leyland Tiger coach, which is quite an impressive little thing as well. Which means now we need to go past the three B10Ms and see what's over in that last corner over there, I think, or it could be that way. I've got a little bit lost. This thing that's taught me here is an AC Reliance, which well, admittedly does need a bit of TLC and is kind of midway through having work done and is actually coming up for sale soon. So if you're looking for a vintage bus and want a bit of a project, this thing here could be for you. Behind me, the big blue thing is a Dennis Dominator. Again, love that name. And beyond that is a Leyland Olympian. So I guess I should go that way now. Having kind of walked back into the space, we go back down here. This thing here is a Dennis Dart with a particularly good thing on the, scri on the side. Here is, well, something that seems far too modern to be in the collection, but this is an Optair Solo, and something that I've still seen regularly on the run around near me. And then we have something that isn't a bus. Back here, this is a Bedford decontamination unit, which is very, very cool, similar to a Green Goddess. And this thing is a Leyland PD2, and this I, again, this I particularly like. That's absolutely magnificently gorgeous. Oh, and this is, a, this is the leopard. Working my way back around here, we have a Mark II Metrobus compared to the Mark I there. And that one is an ex-London one wearing its afterlife livery. We have a Dennis Dart there. Behind me here is a DAF DB250. And I walked past another Optair Solo tucked away there. And then over there, that's a Volvo B7. Ooh. What's this? This thing behind me is a Guy Arab Mark II, and it has the wartime utility body on it. As you may or may not have noticed, it's in a rather, well, stripped down state with some components missing, particularly something in this kind of area here. This is a project for some of the younger members here, something that they can get their hands on and, and get involved in when it finally comes back together again. They can feel a real sense of pride that they've helped put this piece of history back together again. Frankly, I wish them the best of luck because there's a lot of work and it's in quite a state. So yeah, good luck guys. And here's how it kind of should look. This is a Guy Arab Mark III built in 1947 for the Blackburn Corporation. In fact, this is the oldest surviving Blackburn Corporation bus in existence. The body was done by Northern coach builders who didn't really do buses, they were more of a trolley bus person. Like this thing, which is the vehicle in the shed most likely to never return to the roads. This is a French trolley bus and it's very interesting, but it, it's a bit strange to just randomly have a trolley bus parked up in here. Going back to the guy though, I was talking to the owner and how much I like old diesels and he said he'll fire it up for me. And I went, yes. 
Right. That is a wonderful noise. That is a wonderful noise of which... Um... <laughs> I'm kind of edging away from as the smoke comes down for all of this. That's a wonderfully old diesel smell to it. And I'm very glad that there is a way out <laughs> because it's very, very slowly. I can't see the back of the bus anymore. I think the smoke's kind of drifting this way with us as well. It's quite... <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful noise. I think we kind of need to evacuate. <laughs> I can feel it in the back of my throat already. <laughs> this is haze. Just... <laughs> it's gone. The bus is gone. <laughs> it's just... He's rolling over the top of it. That's like London back in like the turn of the century <laughs> you just had... <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> oh god it's encroaching on us you see it drifting towards us. i think we're gonna have to like evacuate the entire area now so as the smoke drifts its way slowly towards us Thank you guys for watching this video and having a look around here at the Town and District Transport Trust. It's a wonderful place full of buses and general transportation. The folks here are lovely. If you like what you've seen and you think I'd like to be involved with this, I'd like to help see some of the projects come to fruition or be able to donate and help make some of them come back to life, then the links to their website are in the video description and they would love to hear from you. They're a small group and they would desperately love to have some more hands to help bring stuff back together again. It's a really cool place. So with that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Check them out. And remember, there are open days. That's in the video description when they have their open days where you can come along and see some of the buses and actually get a trip here and look around yourself and maybe talk about getting involved. With that, thank you very much, guys. If you have liked this one, how about clicking over there for one of the other walk-arounds that we've done or down there for one of our reviews on a bus if you like the kind of bussy stuff. And of course, guys, let us know in the comments. Did you enjoy this kind of thing? If not, oh, well. See you next time. Oh God, the smoke is coming everywhere.